together. No, as a matter of fact, this is our first vacation together in eight years. And you're excited about it, Bob Isle? Very much so. Very yeah, much so. <laughs> Straight from Cuckoo Land came Stan Laurel, and tagging along behind, 21 stones worth of Oliver Hardy. When were you last over here? Uh, 1932, wasn't it? That's right. Yes. Now you're over here again, what are you going to do? Well, we're going to do some personal appearances and also a picture. What's the picture going to be called? What's the name of the picture? Uh, Robin Hood, I think. Robin Hood. Robin Hood. That should be good uh, fun. We hope so. <laughs> are you visiting any relatives over here, Sam? I believe you come from Overston. That's right. I'm uh, going to visit my dad and my sister and uh, a few cousins. There's quite a lot of them over here. There's quite a few. What about you, Oliver? Well, I've got a lot of cousins over here, too, I <laughs> hope. <laughs> uh, anything you especially want to do over here, Oliver? Nothing but uh, try and make the people happy, and will you keep quiet a minute? And uh, have a good time, and have everyone else have a good time? I'm talking to the gentleman. Will you keep quiet just a moment? And then I think that uh, after a couple of weeks, we might... What is it? You're standing on my foot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lord and Lady Rodemere receive Anna Neagle, film producer husband Herbert Wilcox, and rising screen personality Michael Wiley. The occasion was the presentation of the Daily Mail Film Awards, Britain's Oscar. Patricia Rock, in strapless evening gown, arrived to join the parade of leading film stars. The Rollermeers next greet Michael Rennie and his wife. Diamonds, mink coats and glittering evening dress all had a night out at this gala for British films. Film stars and the people who make the stars all are there. Arriving now is Greta Gint with Eric Portman as escort. More than two million people voted in the film poll. The people who see the pictures decided who's who in British films. To James Mason, now in New York, and Margaret Lockwood, goes the award of 1947's Best Actor and Actress. Margaret Lockwood receives her trophy from Lady Rotherby. Yeah. Chosen by an overwhelming number of votes as the year's best film is Piccadilly Incident, starring Anna Eagle and Michael Wilding, produced and directed by Herbert Wilcox. Uh, may I on behalf of the sponsors of this film, the Associated British Picture Corporation, the artists, technicians, and the workmen, all of whom have helped in the production of Piccadilly Incident, may I say how delighted and thrilled we are to have won the National Film Award and to have landed this very handsome trophy from the Daily Mail. Among the evening's notabilities is veteran showman C.B. Cochran. Here is Associated British Chief Sir Philip Water and Lady Water. Piccadilly Incident producer Herbert Wilcox joins in the celebrations with his award-winning team. Mrs. Stan Laurel and Mrs. Oliver Hardy arrived with two gentlemen two or three hours late. are on parade at the London Theatre. It's a close-up of the men who made you laugh. George Roby in Farmer's Mock has turned programme seller in aid of the Farmer's Distress Fund. Here is top heavyweight comedian Oliver Hardy taking up all the space. But partner Stan Laurel isn't far away. It's little Stan who always suffers. Also in the bucket business, Tommy Trinder, back again from Australia. Arriving a little late, Sid Field. He was trying hard to dodge the programme selling, but the boys wouldn't let him get away. All the proceeds of their work went to aid those farmers who suffered disastrous losses during the floods. 
boat train, a Pathé cameraman ran into a couple of old friends, Oliver Hardy and Stan Laurel, on their way to the capital for the Royal Command performance. And Mr. Laurel was being as difficult as ever. gentlemen seem to be having trouble with the French food situation. But why are they worrying? Over here, they'll be darned lucky if they get any food at all. Nothing new about a couple of funny men making personal appearances, but when Laurel and Hardy do it, you can expect complications. Yes, even in a simple situation like this, trouble seems to follow them around. Mr. Oliver Hardy, Bachelor of Arts, always appears to have the situation under control, but somehow things just don't seem to work out that way. Take this case, for example. Yes, they've made it and now everybody's happy. Laurel and Hardy, for 30 years, two of the best-known funny men in films, are at Northampton for the start of a music hall tour. Even in the dressing room, it's Hardy who has the final say. Mr. Stanley Jefferson, Stan Laurel to you, can be so awkward at times. Nothing like a respectable bowler to put the finishing touch to an important personal appearance. Usually it's Ollie who gives Stan a well-deserved brush off. Now it looks as if the situation's reversed. But if they're not out soon, it'll be a dusting down for both of them. boys sometimes look worried, it's because they're built that way. And now it seems that Stan's causing more anxiety. But there's no real need to worry, this is just another of the team's key situations. 